Welcome to Supercharge with Digital Market Star, the bi-weekly podcast where we discuss everything related to entrepreneurship and how marketing is important for your success in business venture. I'm your host and also the founder of Market Star, Crystal. In today's episode, we will be breaking down the topic of how to leverage Instagram for your business success. So with us today is Ben and he specializes in Instagram roles and business coach. So So we are super excited to hear some insight from Ben and let's dive in. All right. Thank you, Ben, so much for joining us today. And to get started, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what's your business about? Hey, how's it going? First, I'd, I'd like to say a big thank you for being here and, uh, and part of this podcast. I feel really honored. Um, tell me more about yourself. So I'm Ben. I'm from a little tiny island in the Mediterranean Sea. It's called Malta. So basically I'm a Malteser, not the chocolate. Um, I'm an Instagram coach on uh, on Instagram. I teach people how to build a brand, how to create a content machine that never runs out of ideas and uh, how to develop systems, business systems in their Instagram so they can get leads, get those leads and convert them to uh, high paying customers and so on. That's amazing. So how long have you been doing the business? So actually back in August, I heard about this podcast episode where it talked about a 90 day challenge. It intrigued me a bit. Okay. And then I heard it another three times in the next two weeks. And I was convinced that I have to start a 90 day challenge. Back then I was a graphic designer. Um, I used to do graphic designs for uh, for our family run business and also for uh, for other clients. And uh, there was one time my comment got pinned on a big account that had over like a hundred k followers. Um, and this guy, this guy just randomly sees my pinned comment and he sends me a DM. He's like, "Listen, I need help with uh, with my Instagram." We set up like a call. Uh, and this was in December. So after I spent September, October, and November doing the 90 day challenge, he he uh, he contacted me back in like in, in the beginning of December. So we stop a call, and literally a few minutes before the call, a thought came to my head. I'm like, and he's like, no, I'm like, um, uh, what if I coach this person because he doesn't want just graphic design. This guy wants me to help him with his Instagram. And then I just made a package there and then. Um, uh, we went on the sales call and uh, he's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And the thing is, I never heard from him ever again. Like he had ghosted me. So uh, so in January, I was like, you know what? This is going to be a new year resolution. I'm going to do my second night day challenge um, as an Instagram coach. Because back then I used to, I, I was a graphic designer but I still used to post about Instagram growth as well. It was more about social media marketing. That was my niche. So then I had niched down to just Instagram growth. Um, and then January, I, I set up what is called a lead magnet. So basically a freebie. I set up a 30, 30 minute free call with me. Uh, basically every call I had uh, in January, I had 27 free calls while they were talking to me and whilst I was uncovering their pain points, I was writing everything down in an Excel sheet. Um, and with an Excel sheet, I I just grabbed the most common pain points and I created like a coaching program. I actually created two offers. It's very important to have like a freebie, a low ticket offer and a high ticket offer. My low ticket offer was, an, was a 60 minute paid call where we just set up uh, one hour we focus on one goal you have and we come up with a strategy and etc cetera, etc cetera. the second it was a four week coaching program i would help people set up their instagram create reels content uh, optimize their bio and all these things and the common pain points basically and that's basically how it started now uh, today i'm on day 266 out of 270 so i'm four days away from finishing my my third 90 day challenge now and uh, yeah, just time flies and I'm really enjoying it. That's amazing to hear. And 
I really, you know, related to you because I was started as a graphic designer as well, <laughs> and I understand that you know there's a lot of more into graphic design than just the design, right? We can also help because business right now they are growing, uh, mostly on social media, right? So For the sure. demand on social media is really high. It's just not just not only like the design but they also want like the strategy to roll like learn how to roll it on instagram and also the content strategy is so important too yeah so yeah really good to hear from you and yeah so for the coaching business so what do you think when you coach your client right what are the essential element of compelling instagram bio that they can use to attract their target audience For sure. So the first thing is I'm going to say what not to do. Um, sometimes, or actually most times, I see hashtags in bios. <laughs> and, and we both know that you cannot rank hashtags on bios. Like they're totally useless. That's the first mistake. The second mistake is that you should not use jargon words in uh, in your bio because no one's going to understand that. Like if I tell you giga, you'd be like, what the hell is that? It's garbage in, garbage out, giga. Exactly, giggle, uh, garbage in, garbage out. You can be like, what the hell is that? You know. So you have to be like super simplistic. Basically, there's this four line method or this three line method. What you're gonna do is you're gonna describe who you are, what you do, your credibility, and your call to action. It's simple as that. Now you have basically 150 characters to sell yourself on the Instagram bio before it it automatically gets to see more so the 151 character it's going to be on the see more section so it's very important you fit these four uh, sections in each line it is this is why it's called a four line method so if you can do if you can fit them in one line each you're going to have an optimized bio. Now, it's very important to also add keywords so if for example you're a graphic designer you have to add graphic design okay not just that you have to also add that in your handle as well so for example if my name is ben i would say designs by ben or graphic designs by ben or bc social media designs that's how it was before but now it's bc insta coach because i'm an instagram coach you understand yeah that's amazing okay so we talk a little bit about a hashtag right so no hashtag on the bio but <laughs> exactly however, like do you have any hashtag strategy for the for them to use in their post and as well as video as well for sure when it comes to hashtags people are just getting a little bit stressed about it like to use three to use five to use eight to use 30. i recommend that the smaller you are the more hashtags you use but as adam mozeri said who is the head of instagram he suggests that you use three to five hashtags that describe what the post is so let me give you an example if you're going to talk about engagement strategies you need to have what is called the flagship hashtag what is the type so if it's engagement strategies you'd want to add digital marketing and then gets even more specific so digital marketing social then the second hashtag would be social media marketing the third hashtag would be content creation the fourth hashtag would be um, engagement strategies and so on and so on you have to dive deeper hashtags basically just are like tags are like you know for example let's say you go to a clothes shop and there's going to be the price tag in that price tag you're going to find certain symbols and all these things hashtags are just the same as as a clothes tag as a clothes price tag so it's very important that hashtags relate describe add on to the current post you're talking about yeah that's amazing because a lot of people like they're confusing about using hashtag right so most of them i think they use 30 hashtag however they don't know how to you know narrow down the topic or deep dive into so in the end they they end up using like different kind of hashtag that not exactly related to each exactly other. So, exactly yeah i don't think that is good uh strategy So yeah, um, beside that, could you share some tips on drafting an engaging caption that encourage um, more interaction and drive engagement? 
for sure. So what do you want to start off with? So for example, let's say we're going to use the same post as an example over here. So if our post is about engagement strategies, if you want to come up with a caption, um, when you say caption, do you mean the copy in the text of the post or the caption when you're writing it down and the, when you're writing down before you post? Uh, the caption that you, um, you're not include in the post. You include in the post. Okay. First thing you need a good hook. Ben, what the hell is a hook? Like a fishing hook? No, <laughs> a hook is called a headline. Now it's very important that you use less than eight words per hook. Why? Because the average attention span of the human is eight seconds. By the way, that is a lot of time, but it, in fact, it's decreasing by month because so many things out there, like the, the most important currency at the moment is attention. And there are so many posts out there. Like there are 2 billion users on Instagram and there are so many posts being published every single minute. Like we've been on this for like 10, 20 minutes now. And the amount of posts have been like been published as we speak is a lot. So how do you differentiate yourself from and how do you stand out? That's the main keyword here. How do you stand out? Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to have to come up with a compelling hook less than eight words and generally you want to go into the negative you want to use negative words here so if you're saying if the post is about engagement strategies you want to say don't engage or stop engaging or stop wasting your time so common words you can use are don't avoid stop or this so for example this is the real engagement strategy that you need. Don't engage. Stop engaging with X, Y, Z, for example, you know. That is the first thing, that's the hook. Now there's the body, okay. Keep it simple. Generally, um, since this is day 266, I have posted 266 posts in the last 266 days. What I did is I, I never like, just I used to just write the captions there and then, like depending on the post. Now, obviously, it has to be important that it's related to the post. Your caption has to relate to the post. If it doesn't, what are you even talking about? You're gonna you're gonna confuse people. And there's a saying: if you confuse, you lose. You have to keep it simple. So we have to have the hook, the body, which complements your post, a call to action. Keep it. Keep just just use one call to action. Ben, what is a call to action? You need to use the ADA formula now attention that is the hook interest is also the, the the body that you use desire so you can tell them like listen if you want more value you can download my free ebook for example the free ebook is the call to action okay and then just sprinkle a few hashtags three to eight hashtags you don't have to use all 30 okay and that to me is how you create a good caption yeah, that's amazing. Um, so I see there are two types of caption nowadays. One is a really short caption where they only have the hook and you know one sentence of the body and yeah. that's it. And the other type of caption where they have like a long form caption where they have, you know, like this check, 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 and then you know exactly, so, exactly. So which one do you refer for the business to use? Good question. It depends on the post as well. Like if it's, for example, a single image, you would just have a short image. Like, for example, I did this last month. I reposted a post I had posted back in November. Um, and I just, the previous post had a long caption. It did average. It got like 50 likes. I, I reposted the same thing, the same graphic and everything last month, but I changed the caption. What I did was put a floppy disk icon and save it in caps lock and just a few hashtags. The same post got me over a hundred likes. That same day, my engagement rose by 332%. It's stuck in my head, this number. I was like, so the thing is, you have to test and experiment. No caption is perfect. Use the words I told you about, 
um, but you have to consult with your inside staff. That is the that is the that is the best and honest social media guru out there. Your inside staff. It will tell you everything, like the numbers, your best posts, your worst posts. So you need to check your top five posts and see the caption length. So, for example, if it's a short one, go for short. If it's a long one, go for long. What you need to add in the caption, which is very important, is keywords that are related to the post. Example, if it's engagement strategies, you have to add these keywords, engagement, engagement strategy, engagement strategies. Those three words are very important because basically Instagram is works like Google. It's like SEO, which is search engine optimization. The more keywords you have, the better. So for example, if I'm going to go in a search bar and type in engagement strategy, Depending on the keywords you have uh, you have written in your caption and in the post, because the algorithm does scan literally everything, you can rank up higher. Yeah, I see. Yeah, speaking of engagement strategy, <laughs> so yeah, because before we have one video talking about engagement strategy, and then that video really flow up and everything. So talking about the collaboration, right? So how important uh, do you think to collaborate with others on inter Instagram and what are some effective ways to, you know, initiate and foster those collaboration? Oh yeah, for sure. So collabs are fun. Collabs are fun. Again, I have been all, over two, five old days of posting every single day. When there was a collab, I used to relax. Okay. Before you even start collabing, you need to understand that uh, you have to you have to pick the right content creators you're going to collab with so for example if i'm an instagram coach i'm not really going to collab with someone who does skiing it won't make sense you're going to collab with someone who's in the same niche as you or very similar to the niche you are in why i believe in win-win i believe in synergy ben what the hell is synergy Basically, if I'm alone, I can I can reach X amount of people. If we are together, we can reach X amount of people, but much more, okay? Synergy is much more important because we're going to collaborate. We're going to combine both audiences to teach them something, okay? Now, it's very important to to have 20 people in uh, in your community. You know, these 20 people, you're going to follow them. You're going to... DM them, why not? Um, be in, uh, put, put, actually turn on their post notifications. So when they post, you're there, okay? You're gonna comment. And this is exactly what I've been doing and, and getting pinned. Um, you're gonna start conversations with these people, comment on every post they, they, they publish. Now you have to find people who post consistently, Ben, consistently this is such a, a keyword a buzzword in social media the minimum posts per week is three if someone posts once a week that is not enough i post seven times a week sometimes even more so you have to find someone who posts daily once even twice these people when they when they post a post when they publish a post you're going to get a notification on your phone and you have to be the first person to to engage like comment engage with their stories as well so for example i like to find stories as the best way as an invitation to start a conversation then what do you mean when there's someone who's like for example walking their dog or they have a nice scenery i'll be like where's this place and they can say i don't know the mountains this and that or for example if they're walking their dog i could say hey nice dog what breed is that and they'll tell you the breed. I'm like, oh, nice. I have a dog as well. Uh, I have a Amstaff Pitbull, for example. And you start a conversation. Now, obviously, you don't want to like upsell them your free book or this or that. You just want to engage, get to know the person. Like the more information you have from the person, the better it is. So when it comes to engagement and collabs, you have to build the relationship first. This could take a month. This could take two months. Um, for example, Crystal just came at me from out of nowhere. She's like, hey, would you like to collab? I'm like, you know what? Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> but uh, it 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 rarely happens that you just randomly accept. It. You have to build the uh, the relationship. Okay, 
relationships is good community is good you don't want to be alone no man is an island so for example if you have a problem with uh, with 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 what whatever problem you have you can go to someone who has who has you're in the same niche who has done this problem before who has solved this problem before be like listen what engagement strategy are you using oh hey ben i use x y and z oh wow i didn't see this thank you so much oh man you're welcome and 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 then he has a problem and be like listen ben i have this problem well, how how can i help oh just do this 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 oh wow man thank you and that's that's you have to be social on social media like this is such another cliche and buzz and buzzword but it's actually true you have to be social <laughs> what do you think yeah because social media literally have the word social in it so exactly you have to be exactly social in the social media right yeah and i i think it's really important to like to build a community and then have people in the same niche as you to just to not you know build a relationship and grow together and it's so exactly. important nowadays yeah and talking about the posting frequency so i have seen some you know um the algorithm changing a lot yep. so before they said that oh you can only post three times to five times a week but um, the other day, I just saw the announcement say you have to post every day to get you know, <laughs> more engagement and everything. So with the algorithm that constantly like changing and evolving. So what are some of the current best practices to increasing post reach and, you know, ensuring that the content is seen by, you know, the wider audience? Yeah, of course. I always recommend starting a 90 day challenge. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I always recommend that you have to start a 90 day challenge. When I first started back in first September, I had no idea about Instagram. I thought Instagram was funny cat videos, influencers posing this, fake photos, this, that, bots and whatever it was, follow for follow and all these things. But after the first 30 days, I know my content was rubbish, terrible, poor, but I kept going. Okay, day 60, I got better. On day 85, I switched niches or I niched down from social media to just Instagram growth. Day 85 out of 90, by the way. That's when I started to realize, like, listen, I only want to talk about Instagram, not social media, because social media is just so broad. You have LinkedIn, Twitter, this and that, you know, Instagram. I want to focus on Instagram. So it took me 85 consistent days to realize, like, listen, I am consistent. I know what i want to post now now a secret ingredient you could do to post every single day actually two one is that you need to use templates templates will speed up the process for you that's one number two is you have to batch create so for example if i'm gonna post seven days a week i don't have time to like get up every morning and and, and create a reel there and then so what i do is that every saturday I come up with seven ideas. Now in my idea bank, then what's an idea bank? We're talking about money here now. An idea bank is where you store your ideas. So for example, the most times I get my ideas is when I walk in the morning, when I shower, when I'm driving, when I'm just reading a book, anytime, not when I'm working though. That's just, I don't know how it is, it's just opposite. So when you have these ideas, you're gonna open your notepad in your phone, in your Excel sheet, wherever you want, and just add these ideas. When it comes to designing, all you have to do is just pick up this list. Like, okay, I want to focus on these seven for the next week. Just change the hooks because the hook is the most important part of it. If they don't read the hook, your post is a waste of time. You have no one that's going to read it for you. Okay. Now, once you have that, the next thing is you have to just batch create. Okay. Templates will speed up the process. That is one way of being consistent. I have done it for two, six, oh days in a row. Okay. So after that, how to be consistent? Should I post three times a week? Should I post seven times a week? Adam Mozeri, head of Instagram, said that you have to at least post three times per week. If you can do three times per week, that's brilliant. Now, when I say by consistent, you have to post every day at the same time. So if you post at 1 p.m., you have to post at 1 p.m. If you want to experiment six times, post at 1 p.m. The seventh post, post at 5 p.m. or a different time and see your analytics. Is it better to post at 5 p.m. or 1 p.m.? If it's 1 p.m., stick to it. 
for the next 90 days, okay? Now, if you batch create, use templates, and you're consistent and have an idea bank, you will definitely be able to post seven times a week. If you don't have time, there are so many ways and, and easy. You can just do a fancy quote, and that's it. You can film yourself working and put a quote on that stock footage of yourself and that's it you don't have to like complicate things what do you think yeah i think so too and i think you know um when we first started it's okay to you know don't know your niche yet because or you're not perfect yet because perfectionism exactly. is the one who holding you back so you just start start anyway just do it anyway be consistent of what you're doing and you will get better and better because the more you're doing it the more you get better right? exactly exactly yeah. i'd like to add on that like progress over perfection many people be like oh my reel is not doing well or i have to like you know put so much detail in this carousel in a single image no you don't just spend 20 minutes per post and just publish it the perfect post just does not exist okay everyone thinks that oh you would think that your single image is, is very good but the guy in, in another country be like no that's not a good post for me you know I'm, I'm not gonna like it or or interact with it so every post is different i like to say done is better than perfect and i like to combine that with start and continue it's very easy to start but it's very difficult to continue if you have those two mindsets you can call them you're fine okay now after 30 days check your insights see which best post which post is performing really well and just double down on that don't stress over anything else i did this back in on day 179 out of 180 so my second 90 day challenge i had checked my insights on day 179 i found my best reel had over 1000 views i mirrored it I did the same thing, the same formula, but improved the lighting and did a series about the common team around the top five posts. That same reel from 1K views, the next day I posted the same thing. On day 180, that reel got me 15K views. Why? Because I checked my insights. Yeah, I agree that checking your insight is so important because you need to keep track of everything. So if you keep doing it without, you know, seeing the analytics, it's really hard for you to know like which part you have to be better and everything. So it's really important to do that. And I want to touch on a little bit about the template as well. So I think the reason why you need a template is because it's going to speed up your process is the first one. Exactly. Second, you need to be consistent with your brand image, right? You cannot just use random color random font every time you post because people not gonna recognize you from that they're gonna think oh this is this from this person because they don't have any you know brand image to recognize you from what you're doing so having a template and a brand image is so important for you to draw Fully agree. on instagram yeah and i i see that now today like instagram really pushing out real so what do you think about real and how we can implement real in the Instagram growth? So this is actually a very good question because uh, since six days ago, I posted five reels in six days and I realized I, I, I did a bunch of research today about the reels algorithm. And after two, six oh days, now I finally get why. I should be posting reels. The thing is, carousels and single images are just going to be shown at your current audience. So if you have 1,000 followers, it's going to be seen by these people. You might rank on the explore page and the hashtags, but that's very, I wouldn't say difficult, but very technical. Now the reels algorithm is totally different. The reels algorithm is going to be shown to people who are not following you. Now it's very important to learn this. The Reels algorithm is gonna show the content that you created as real to people you don't follow. This is why my, my Reel had 15K views. Why? Because it was seen by people who are not in my following. 
Back then I had 1.2k followers. Two days later, I had 1.4k followers. I had 200 followers in two days because these are new people. So if you want to grow your first 1,000 followers or continue adding to the following you have at the moment, post reels. Why? Because it's going to be shown to people outside of your current follower base. This is this could be like suggested reels. Like, have you ever been on like, you'd be scrolling over reels and then you just find a, um, a reel that you, you don't even follow the person and you find it so interesting. And if he has a call to action, for example, follow for more, you're gonna follow him. Why? Because the content is compelling. And that's what I had done with my viral post. Yeah, totally agree. I think real is the way for you to reach new people, right? Exactly. And when people see you from the real, if they're interested in your content, they're gonna check out your profile and that's where your single post and your carousel post gonna be the one who nurture the you know, the the um the user the the one that who follow you right so having these like incorporate these reels and uh, singapore and carousel is really important for you to grow you cannot grow by only doing one of them you need to balance them in order to grow consistently so yeah um and Last but not least, so do you have <laughs> any advice for business or creator out there that just started their business or looking to scale their business through Instagram? Patience. A lot of patience. Many people start, but they don't continue. I've been here for two, six or days and counting consistently, and I have a lot to learn. I have showed up every single day. I have wanted to quit but i'll end this here he or she who doesn't quit cannot lose you can have the next six months being terrible but the seventh month is where everything changes overnight success does not exist overnight success is built after working for it for four years ten years whatever it is but he who doesn't quit cannot lose. So just start and continue. The journey is much more beautiful than the destination. Keep that in mind. I totally agree with you on this because it's really easy for everybody to start, right? But it's really hard for everybody to keep consistent with what they are doing and keep doing whatever they're doing. So I think a lot of people quit in between because, you know, um, they cannot keep up with everything. So, yeah, and I really understand that you cannot lose when you continue to show up every day exactly because even exactly. though right now your content is terrible however like we discussed before um the more we're doing it the more we get better so there's exactly. no chance for you to lose it's just you stop doing it or you know give exactly up you have to show up every single day the more you show up the more data you have so you can and and the faster you make mistakes, the faster you're going to fail, the better you're going to become. Like my first face reel took me three hours to do. My next face reel will take me just 10 minutes to do. What is the difference? I showed up, I showed up, I showed up. Without my terrible reel, I would have never gotten my 15K viral reel. Okay, so you have to show up, show up, show up, fail faster, fail faster. Totally agree. So failure is just... Uh... You know, a part of the process. Towards success. Yeah, part of the process. Exactly. And you have to enjoy the process in order to grow. Fully agree. Okay. So that's bring us to the end of this episode. And thank you, Ben, for joining us today on the discussion. Thank you for having me. The Instagram growth strategy. So as always, thank you for listening to Supercharge with Digital Market Star podcast. And if you enjoy the show, please follow and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify. And be sure to come back in two weeks for another discussion. So until then, this is Crystal. And don't forget, don't stop and keep believing. And see you next time.